Hello there. I'm Kurt Steinbrook, pastor of Faith Lutheran Church, and welcome to our series on Romans. We are actually more than halfway through Romans at this point. If you're joining us for the first time, we're going to be looking at Romans 10 today. Um, but if you've missed our other videos, you can catch them on our YouTube channel, which is the Faith Lutheran Church Wesley Chapel Lutheran our Faith Lutheran Church Wesley Chapel YouTube channel, or you can go to our website at faithwesleychapel.com. And under the About Us, you'll find our blog where you can find all of these uh, videos along with blog posts with notes, as well as other series that we've done. And uh, so I invite you to do that. But today we're going to be looking at Romans 10, 14 to 17. And before we get started with that, let's take a moment to pray. Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you for the good news that you have given us through your word, the Bible, and uh, pray that you would work in us that faith that we uh, would believe it and receive it, uh, that we would trust you for our salvation. And we pray that you would open our hearts and our minds to your word today. By the power of your spirit, we would understand it and uh, that you would bless us through it and that you would draw us closer to you each and every day. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so let's read our passage, and then we'll dig in. Let me share it with you. All right, so this is Romans chapter 10, verses 14 to 17. How will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach? unless they are sent. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not obeyed, all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, so we have this, this passage here in Romans 10, which basically outlines the way God works to bring the gospel to people and to change people's lives, to, to save people. That And it kind of goes backwards, right? So it says, how can they call on him? They have not believed. Can they believe whom they have not heard? So if we reverse it, what's the order, right? So first, people are sent, and they are sent to proclaim the gospel. Then they do that. They proclaim the gospel. People hear it, people having heard it, believe, and then having believed, people call upon the Lord. And there's an order to that. It's a, a chronological order to what's going on in this way that God has set, set up for people to be saved. This is how the gospel is going to go out. And remember, the gospel is the power of God for salvation. And so that's the, the theme of Romans. So uh, in tomorrow's video, we're going to talk about the sentness uh, that that happens here for uh, for Christians, you know, that we get to be those beautiful feet who preach the good news. Uh, today, I wanted to focus more in on the beginning and the end of this passage. So how are they to call on him in whom they have not believed? How are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? Right. So in order to believe, we have to have heard. So we, we can see that connection right there. But then when we get down to verse 17, it says, so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Okay, so you know, hearing through the word of Christ is explaining which word this is. So this is the gospel message, the message of Jesus Christ. And faith comes from hearing that. So this is this idea that God works faith through our hearing of the gospel and uh, that this is God's, God's work here. So God's the one who's sending and uh, God's the message or about which is being sent. So he is, he has given us the message. He has sent us to proclaim it. He is there in the hearing of it. Remember his word is living and active. And then in the hearing of that, he gives faith, which then allows us to call upon him as our Lord and Savior. So it's this idea of hearing that I want to talk about here is because the concept of hearing that's being used here is 
a passive thing. If you think about it, you hear things whether you want to or not. You overhear people in conversations. You hear traffic driving by. Uh, you may hear someone. Uh, you know, maybe you're trying to sleep and someone's uh, talking or watching a TV show too loud or or snoring or something like that. Right? It's not something you you actively have to do. To hear is something that happens passively. And the way that the, the scriptures talk about then the uh, resistance to the gospel, the resistance that people put up to uh, the mercy of God is this idea of them kind of plugging their ears to the gospel. So, um, you know, so it'd be like, if you don't want to hear the, the movie going on in the room next door because you're trying to sleep, you put on some earplugs or you put your head under the pillow or whatever you might do to try to block that sound so you don't hear it anymore. That's the kind of uh, a sense to the resistance of the gospel that we see here. And so the, the active part in those two scenarios, right? We hear the sound and we resist the, the sound, right? That the active part is in the resistance. It's not in the hearing. The hearing is passively happening to you. The active thing is if you then try to block out that sound. So the active term in this particular passage is not the hearing. The active term is the preaching, right? So the preaching is happening, and that's causing people to hear. And it's in the hearing then that comes faith. Now, there's a lot of passages that talk about this, and what this really gets down to is who is the one who is responsible for our faith? Is Are we the ones responsible for our faith, or is God the one responsible for our faith? Are we actively having, I got to believe, I got to believe, I got to you know kind of do this um, as this thing that I do, I, I create this in myself, I ascend to it in my mind, I look at all the evidence and decide this is what I want to believe. Or is this something where God is working on us in order to have that faith? And what uh, what we see in the scriptures is really that latter concept, that God is the one who is at work here. We are passively receiving this. Um, and if we're doing anything active, it's that we're actively resisting the hearing of the word and receiving the mercy that God gives us. So I want to take a, a look at several verses that talk about this to really show how this is something that not only do we get this just from you know we get faith or faith comes from hearing which is a causal uh sentence there but also we get this throughout scripture over and over and over again so i want to cover some of these these passages about that so real quick before we get into the scriptures i wanted to talk real briefly about why this is a difficult topic for us sometimes. And because in the church, this is something that we don't have a uh, uniform agreement on. There are people who think that we choose God, and there are people who think that God chooses us. People who think we make a decision for God, there are people who think God creates the faith in us. And the scriptures are going to show us how this is God's work, that God is doing these things. In fact, that we are spiritually dead, we are unable to choose God. Um, even if we wanted to, but there's still this push. And I think even in, in those who believe that it's God who's working, we still struggle to, to really see that this is totally, this is just God that's at work. Here. And I think there's two reasons uh, that there's probably many reasons, but two that kind of hit the top um, for why we, we do this. And I think the first is just, it's how we experience it. You know, it's uh, when we hear the gospel, we think about it and we say, I believe that. And it feels like I just made a decision. It feels like I thought through it and I ascended to this, you know, this place of, of being able to say, I believe in this. You know, I got to that point. Um, and sometimes we, we go back and forth for a while, you know, and we really kind of wrestle with it. And so it feels like we're making a decision. That's the experience of it. But we don't really have a way to detect this is what God is doing in me. You know, it can feel like we're making the choice, even though God is the one who's uh, working that in us, working that faith in us. We don't really have a way to detect that. Um, I heard had one pastor tell me it was kind of like Newtonian and Einsteinian physics, that Newton uh, describes what, what you see very well, 
But then Einstein comes along and describes how it's actually working beneath, you know, what you actually see beneath the surface. And so that the the Newton thing is like, hey, I just I just chose this. The Einsteinian aspect, if you will, would be you now this is what God was doing in you and why you chose that. Because the Holy Spirit was doing that. Um, so I, this is something that we don't uh it's not unusual for us. We, we actually see this pretty often in, in our lives. If you even think about the way that you think about things is affected by the way that you were raised. Uh, you know, it's you, the way that you do things is affected by the people that are around you, even though you feel like you know, you're this autonomous person, you're, you're constantly affected by the things around you. I remember talking to one person who had just had surgery and they were taking pain medicine and uh, they were saying how it changed how they, interacted with people changed their emotions and the things they would say um and it wasn't you know in their mind they they just thought they were responding to things and they were thinking things but uh you know in truth it was the medicine that was affecting them and causing them uh to do these things so it's not an unusual thing we just don't have a way to process that but it feels like feels like i made a decision and so i think that's one aspect the other is that we feel like we need to have made the decision that somehow if we don't have the agency in this, that it's it's uh, less legitimate, less real, um, that it somehow impacts that. Um, you know, and so sometimes you hear uh, the description of Jesus saving us being like a lifeguard. And the lifeguard, uh, you know, just is out there watching and we're, we're struggling in the water and we just have to call out and the lifeguard will come rescue us. Um, well, is it any less of, a, of an act of, um, you know, life saving. If the lifeguard, rather than waiting for you, just goes out and saves you, or uh, maybe more in line with with the the biblical description, if we're drowned out there in the water and the lifeguard jumps out into the water and brings you back and then resuscitates you, right? It's every bit as much of a life saving act. In fact, maybe more so. Um, you know, so we don't have to have the agency in this in order for it to be real in order for our faith to be real and in order for the salvation to be real but let's take a look at the scripture because in the end how we feel about all these things isn't really what matters what god tells us in his word is what matters so let's uh let's look at the bible here and see how it describes this so in romans let me share this there you go okay so in romans chapter 10 so the same chapter, just a few verses earlier in verses six to eight, it says, but the righteousness based on faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend to heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. So here we have that same concept where we're we have the word and we have it clarified what it is. It's the word of faith that we proclaim. So that's that gospel message again, just like in our passage for today, it talks about how the word, uh, the thing that you're hearing is the word of Christ. That's the thing that then uh, creates faith in us. But the idea here is that we aren't going to God. We aren't the ones who are seeking out God in order to get what we need. Rather, the word is near you. The word has come to you. If you remember in John 1, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, that God is the active agent who is coming to us rather than us going to God. And so that was already established in Romans 10. But then even before that, we see in Romans 3.11, no one understands. No one seeks God. And if we look at this whole section, it's, you know, everyone's mouths are like open graves and all this other stuff, right? We, nobody is seeking God. That's just, that is not who we are pre-Christ. Before faith in Christ, before, you know, we've heard so that we could believe so that then we can call upon the Lord. Before that, we are not seeking Christ. We are not. So that's what it's saying there in Romans 3.11. That's the idea of, of Romans 10, 6 to 8, is that we're not the ones who go to God. He's the one who comes to us. 
And so when we look at these, we're going to see a, a really clear theme here um, as we go through some of these passages. So, and I'm just going to leave this uh, shared with you so that, because we're going to be moving through these relatively quickly. But uh, let's just look at a few more of these passages that explain what's going on when somebody hears the gospel and believes. So John 15, 16. You did not choose me. I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. So that whatever you ask, uh, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Okay, so who chose who? Jesus chose, uh, in this case, the disciples. Um, the choosing is happening on God's side. Um, Ephesians 1, 4 to 5. Even as he chose us in him, that is Christ, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to his purpose and will. Okay, so again, everything there, everything is God's work, right? He chose us before the foundations of the world. Um, he's the one who's going to make us holy and blameless before him. He predestined us for adoption to himself um, as sons through Jesus Christ. So he's adopting it. He's adopting us. And all of this is according to the purpose of his will. Right, so there's nothing in this in which we are doing something. There's nothing in this where we are hearing and we're making a decision where we are hearing and somehow we are generating this faith in and of ourselves. God is the one who's doing this and he's, this all began before the foundations of the world. All right. And it's according to his purpose. So John 6, 44, no one, this is Jesus speaking, no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up on the last day. Okay, so we cannot come to God. That's the no one seeks God, right? And the Bible also talks about us being spiritually dead. Like we're, we're dead ones. Dead ones don't do anything. Uh, we're not the ones who go seek out God. We're not the ones who ascend to heaven or descend to the abyss, right? He comes to us and draws us to him. Um, so, and this is why, right? So, like I just said, it talks about us being dead. Well, Ephesians 2, 1, and you were dead in the trust in the trespasses and sins, right? So that's who we are. Pre-Christ, we are dead in our trespasses and in our sins. Uh, dead people don't do anything. We keep going. Uh, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not a result of works so that no one may boast. Right. So it's grace. So this is the unmerited favor of God that you have been saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing. Now, there are some who would say, well, the, the not of your own doing is speaking of the salvation, but not of the faith. But there's no distinction here um, because the salvation comes through the faith. And so if we're the ones who are doing the faith, then there's some part of our doing there. And this is saying there's this is not of our own doing. It's, it's entirely a gift of God. Continuing on, Matthew 16, 17. And Jesus answered. This is talking to Peter when they had asked, he, Jesus had asked, who do people say that I am? And they said, oh, prophet and, and all these different things. Um, and then he says, who do you say I am? And Peter speaks up and he says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And then Jesus answers Peter and says, blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, which means son of Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. Okay, so when he confesses who Jesus is, that he is the, the Christ, the son of the living God, Jesus says, you know, you are blessed. So, you know, so again, he's receiving blessing. Um, because flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. You didn't come up with this. You weren't taught this. Rather, my Father in heaven revealed it to him. Right? So God is the one who's acting and revealing this. Uh, 1 Corinthians. Why do we need God 
to act like this? Why do we need God to reveal us? First Corinthians 2.14 tells us the nature or the natural person does not accept the things of the spirit of God for they are folly to him. And he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Okay, now when it says the natural person, that's the person that's in and of ourselves, the human flesh corrupted by sin. We do not accept the things of the Spirit of God, and we're not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Okay, so we're not only, you know, so we're spiritually dead, we're enemies of the cross, we're not capable of either accepting or understanding the things of God. Right, not of ourselves, not in our natural flesh. Uh, let's look at another one here. Second Thessalonians two thirteen, but we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits to be saved through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. Okay, so God is the one who chose them, and He did it through sanctification by the Spirit and belief. That's how God chose them. That's how he caused this. Uh, keep going. 2 Timothy 1, 8 to 9. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who saves us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. Okay, so again, God's the one who's saving us. He's the one who's calling us, not because of anything in us, not because of our works, but because of his purpose. So not because of our purpose, because of his purpose and his grace. And then he gave us all of this in Jesus Christ before the ages began. So before we were even thinking about it, he had already worked this. John 1, 12 to 13. Um, talk, this is where it talks about the word became flesh, the flesh and dwelt among us. So Christ is it's Christ's incarnation, Jesus incarnation. Um, and it says that uh, that his people rejected him. But then it says, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God who were born not of flesh or sorry, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man, but of God. Okay, so for all who receive him, now receive, that you could see that either as being passive or active, if I am somehow actively receiving something, but the, uh, the effect really is more passive. You receive something, something is given to you. You know, it, it's put, you know, if you think about a receiver in football, they're, the ball is being thrown to them hitting them they're they're wrapping their arms around it uh, but to receive something is is typically a passive thing so for those who receive him who believed in his name he gave the right to be children of god who were born and this clarifies now how this happens it's not of blood okay which means it's not because you were born into it which would have been something that especially the the people of israel would have said you know we have the forefathers we're we're all good because we, we've got Abraham as our father. But it's not about blood. So it's not of blood or the will of the flesh. Okay, so it's not it's not about our um, unbelieving flesh is not able to do it. We don't desire it. Remember, no one seeks God. So it's not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man. Right. So, so there, there's nothing in us. There's nothing in our society around us. There's nothing, um, you know, in the fallen world that is causing us to believe, to receive him, to uh, become the children of God. It's happening of God. God is the only, God is the one. We are born of God. So it's not, it's not any of these other things. It's always God work. He's always the activation. And last one here, first, first Corinthians 12, three. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the spirit of God ever says Jesus is accursed. 
and no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. Right, again, the flesh doesn't understand the things of the Spirit. It won't accept the things of the Spirit. We are dead. We are enemies of the cross. We are not seeking God. It's God who is always shown as being the one who is acting. He is acting and sending. He is acting in the word. He is acting and creating faith in us. He calls us. He has chosen us. He has adopted us. And he does this through his word and his spirit working through the word. It's his work. It's not our work. It's not our choice. It's not our um, decision that we make. It's God who comes to us, who then by his spirit, uh, you know, causes us to be born and made and become the children of God, in which case now we can say that Jesus is Lord. You know, or going back to our original passage here, you know, faith comes from hearing, hearing through the word of Christ. You can't believe unless you heard. You can't call on God unless you heard. Because it's God working through his word, giving us faith, in which case now we can call upon God. So I think that's incredibly reassuring to know that because I, I know I've, I've certainly had enough conversations with people who said, did I really believe Did I really choose God because then they look at their actions or, you know, or, or, or whatever it is, or now they, they feel like they believe more than they did before. And maybe, maybe I need to do it again because I don't know if I really understood it. I mean, we never fully understand it. That's the thing. Cause we never fully understand the depth of our sin. Let me stop sharing here. We never really fully understand the depth of our sin. We never fully understand the cost that was involved uh, with Jesus dying on the cross and what he suffered for us. So we never get to this point where now I understand it all and, you know, can make this decision. We couldn't understand it anyways, because they're things of the spirit. So God comes to us. He calls us. He calls us through his word. And then he creates faith in us to believe and be able to call on him. Because faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Amen. All right, that's it for today. Go in peace and serve the Lord. God bless. Have an awesome day. See ya.